Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to go on a little adventure to one of the brightest stars and one of the most famous stars in our night sky known as Betelgeuse. We're going to talk about Betelgeuse, we're going to talk a little bit about its history and its future, and you're going to find out some of the things about it that you may have not known. Welcome to What The Math. So where exactly are we going? Well, we're actually going toward the Orion's Belt, which is actually is coming into our view right there. Uh, the Orion Nebula and the Orion Belt that you see right here is sort of where Betelgeuse is located. And what we uh, have known about Betelgeuse for a very, very, very long time, for thousands of years, is that it's essentially one of the brightest stars in our night sky, and it's one of the brightest orange-red stars in our night sky. Can you guess where it is? It's right here. This is Betelgeuse. So it's also known as Alpha Orionis, and that's going to be our destination for this video. So let's actually fly through our galaxy at a distance of approximately 640 light years from us. And we're going to go explore this beautiful system and talk a little bit about it. Uh, so Betelgeuse is actually uh, one of the most studied stars in the night sky, and it's been known for a very, very long time. We know a lot about it, we actually have studied it for a very, 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 very long time, and we've discovered a lot about its atmosphere, its composition, its... Uh, pretty much everything, even its size. However, we don't really know its mass. Since it doesn't really have any detectable companions, this one here is... Uh, this companion right here is actually procedurally generated, since we don't know much about its companions, we can't easily measure its mass. But there's a lot of things about it that are actually quite unusual. For one, it's moving really fast compared to other stars in this region, meaning that it was probably thrown out of some kind of a uh, constellation of stars by interaction with some other larger stars. And it's moving across uh, this particular region of space about 30 kilometers per second faster than everything else. And it's creating this unusual bull shock because it's moving so fast, and the size of that bow shock is ridiculously large. It's several um, light years wide, and it's many thousand light years long. So it's basically like a bullet flying through, let's say, um, air, and creates this kind of an interesting bow shock that you don't really see in this game, unfortunately, but it is there. We also know that it's very large. It's possibly up to about um, anywhere from three to six astronomical units in radius, Meaning that it's basically a distance from the center of our sun to uh, way past asteroid belt. So if it was in our solar system, it would cover Earth, Venus, Mars, Mercury, and a bit of an asteroid belt as well. And uh, it's in its later stage right now. It's what's known as a red supergiant. It used to be a star somewhat similar to our sun, but because it was so massive to begin with, it basically lived through its life relatively fast. It sort of uh, burned through hydrogen relatively fast, and it's now at a stage where it's burning helium, and it's going to burn some other elements at some point. So after it fuses helium into carbon and oxygen, um, it actually will, or probably already has ignited hydrogen shell outside of the core, and it will eventually burn through neon, magnesium, silicon, and all the way to iron, at which point it will basically stop the core will collapse and will undergo a type 2 supernova, which will be very, very bright. When this star goes through supernova, we're going to be able to see it from our planet very easily. And it's actually going to be so bright that you'll even see it in the morning. You'll see it in the, during the daylight. For about two months, you'll be able to see this very bright patch of light, brighter than our moon. But this will be a long, long time from now. It's at least 100,000 years from now, possibly even a million years from now, depending on how massive the star is, and also depending on whether it's spinning or not. Now, even though it looks so big, it's actually not super massive. We think it's anywhere between 10 to maybe 20 masses of the sun, and it's actually very low in density. Its density here, um, all in all, is way, way less dense than even the density of air on Earth. So. It's, uh, it's so little in terms of density, it's something like 12 parts per billion. Um, and 
because of this, it's sometimes known as the red hot vacuum because basically it's sort of like vacuum, but it's ridiculously super hot here. Now, in this video, I wanted to actually land on some of the procedurally generated planets as well and possibly even land on the surface of this object just to show you what all of it looks like. So let's land on this red supergiant and check it out as well. So because this star is so well known to us, it's been fascinating the astronomers for thousands of years. And the Chinese astronomers actually refer to the star as a yellow orange giant and would describe this as very bright yellow star, which suggests to astronomers today that it may have actually changed its color in the last few thousand years, because now it's a lot more red than it used to be. And this also tells us a, a little bit more about the evolution of these stars. We don't really know enough about the evolution of such stars yet, so it suggests that they actually undergo color change quite dramatically, quite fast as well. So let's come to this first planet known as Betelgeuse 1. This is a procedurally generated planet that we think might actually exist there. We've detected possibly up to nine companions to Betelgeuse. And maybe just maybe one of them looks like this. And you can kind of see that because it's so close to Betelgeuse, it's actually emitting almost like a comet-like tail. This is basically all of the atmosphere and all of the surface molecules being burned away from the surface of this beautiful planet. And this right here is a scorched desert with the average temperature of about 1,700 degrees Celsius. And the surface here would be uh, pretty, pretty hot. Everything here would be very, very hot. And since it's not tidally locked to the star, basically all of the surface would be ridiculously hot here. Now, one more interesting thing about Betelgeuse is that it's actually a variable star, meaning that it changes its brightness. So even though it's currently the ninth brighter star in the um, in the sky, in the night sky, sometimes it becomes the seventh brighter star because it does get a little bit brighter with time. So it does change its brightness depending on how it pulsates and depending on um, what side of the star is pointing toward us. And it also does increase and decrease in size quite dramatically. Let's maybe take a look at another planet here. Let's explore some of the other planets. Let's find the one that might actually be suitable to life. Uh, let's check this one out. This is Betelgeuse 2. Slightly cooler at 1600 degrees Celsius. And it has five moons orbiting around it. So here it comes. And we're going to take a look at it as well. And... Um, one uh, more really unusual fact about this particular star, oh, look at this, this is actually beautiful, um, is that this star actually shrunk by about 15% by about since 1993 observations. So it decreased in size quite dramatically. We don't really know why, because it's still kind of been actively studied, but it definitely decreased in size. And since we don't really know exactly what the size of the star is, because it's sort of difficult to estimate where the star begins and where it actually ends. Um, it's very difficult for us to estimate exactly by how much it changes in terms of size, but it definitely decreased a little bit. And it looks like we found some sort of a dead volcano on this pl second planet here. And where is the actual Betelgeuse? There it is. Look how large it is in, this, in the night sky of this unusually hot planet. And so anyway, so this is planet number two, also not very habitable, or a little bit too cold for, uh, a little bit too hot for comfort. Let's go to the third star. This is a star by the name of Betelgeuse 3. And let's accelerate time here just to see how these beautiful moons to orbit around the second planet. And um, interestingly, because of this contraction of the star, because it, it changed its size um, so dramatically, uh, in the last few years, especially since 2009, there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of conspiracy theories about how maybe just maybe the star will go supernova really soon and will basically destroy the life on our planet Earth. And uh, this, combined with the fact that so many people were predicting the end of the world in 20, uh, 2012, basically created quite a lot of um, end of the day scenario talk, which was a little bit funny to read, but also didn't really make much sense. So yeah, overall, we know that this will go supernova, but because the star is not massive enough, we know that it actually will not produce any gamma, gamma rays and will not produce any X-rays. And the amount of radiation it will actually produce after the supernova will be not particularly powerful enough 
to, to cause anything on Earth. It will definitely be beautiful and visible from Earth, but it will not kill anything. It will not cause any kind of um, extinction event. All right, planet number three, also hot, almost 400 degrees Celsius, also desert. Uh, in this case, it's called Hot Selena. All right, well, there's still more planets to go. Let's keep going. Let's find something that's a little bit more habitable. And uh, here we have a berry center. This means that there is actually two planets orbiting around one another. It's a binary planet, planet system. Now, um, one thing that most people don't know is that Betelgeuse is the actual official name of this star. And it does come from Arabic. It comes from Ibt al Jausa, which uh, I believe means the armpit of Orion. So because it's in the Orion's belt, um, it's named after one of the components of the star system. All right, so we have hot Selena, 175 degrees, and another hot desert at 181 degrees. Let's see if they look any different. These two stars orbit around one another, forming a binary planetary system, and they actually look pretty cool. They're about 0.3 masses of um, Earth, I believe. And they do, this one has atmosphere. This one has like 0.3 atmospheric pressures on it, which gives it a little bit of greenhouse effect. It looks very beautiful, but just as hot as the other planets we've seen so far. And uh, this one here, I'm basically looking for liquid water at this point. I just want to find some liquid water. This one here actually is very similar to Earth in terms of gravity, but mass wise, it's only about half the mass of Earth. And it has moons around it. It has four moons around it. But everything else looks just the same as those other planets. It's a dead hot world. Okay, moving on. I believe we have one last chance. There's one more planet left. This is the last chance we have, and here we go. Betelgeuse 7. Oh, it's even hotter. It's even hotter than everything else here. So this is a hot desert. 478 degrees Celsius, ridiculously high atmospheric pressure, and because of this ridiculously high greenhouse effect, it would have actually been perfect. It would have been habitable if it didn't have such a high atmospheric pressure. But the atmosphere here contains CO2, water, hydrogen, what is it, sulfide, I think, and a derivative of methane, C2H4. I forget what exactly what this is. So in other words, the atmosphere here is very thick, very, very deadly. And uh, so thick as a matter of fact that you can't even see the um, the actual surface. So I have to go through the atmosphere to get to the surface here. It's essentially kind of like a coolant of Venus. And on the, here's the surface. And from the surface, you basically barely see the star. It's so smoggy here that you don't see anything. So this is Venus-like planet in the system of Betelgeuse in Space Engine. Very beautiful, but not particularly habitable. However, it's actually very likely currently in the habitable zone of the star. Which means that, oh wait, which means that maybe, just maybe, the moons might be habitable. This one has 80, uh, it's an asteroid with 80 degrees Celsius temperature. And this is a, another asteroid that also has 80 degrees um, Celsius temperature. So maybe these asteroids might be more habitable than the actual planet. But they're not very big. They're only about 60 kilometers in size. Well, looks like this is probably the most habitable object in the system right now. And since it has no atmosphere and low gravity and doesn't really have anything else for us to consider to be home, um, looks like Betelgeuse is not a particularly interesting uh, system in Space Engine. Even though these planets and these asteroids look absolutely amazing, none of them are habitable, none of them can support life. And in a few hundred thousand years, possibly a million years, all of this will undergo a supernova, destroying any opportunity for life to exist in the system. Well, that's all I wanted to actually talk about in this video. This is a very interesting star. It's been studied for a very long time. It's actually taught us quite a lot about various um, atmospheric parameters of various stars because we were able to see the atmospheric parameters of this star very well. 
And um, Hubble Telescope used this star for many different studies just to kind of try to understand how these stars evolve and how, uh, in general, our star will evolve as well. And basically what eventually will happen to Betelgeuse when it goes through its uh, last days of life before it goes supernova. And when it does go supernova, it will very likely become either a neutron star of 1.5 masses of Sun, which is actually the most likely scenario, or it might become a small black hole, but that's very unlikely. If its mass is higher than 20 masses of Sun, it might become a black hole, but right now we're almost certain that it's probably going to become just a neutron star. And if it acquires some mass from the outside, like if one of the planets falls into it and um, lets it absorb the mass from that planet, it will then become a pulsar. And we might be able to see the pulsar pulsate uh, in the next few million years. So that's the story of Betelgeuse. That's what it's going to become in the next future. And that's what it is now. And now it's basically flying away from us at a very high velocity compared to other stars in the system. And anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video. I wanted to show you Betelgeuse, I wanted to talk about it, I wanted to give you an idea what it's like and what it will be in the next few million years. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to watch something else, because you're going to learn something else a little bit different. And anyway, space out, let's escape the system and fly away from here and let Betelgeuse do its own thing. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.